Good morning. Buenos dias. <laughs> Welcome to the 46 Mill Valley Film Festival. My name is Diana Sanchez Maciel. I'm an education program manager here at California Film Institute. And welcome to our screening of Radical. <laughs> yeah. I want to start off by giving a special and warm thank you to our sponsors, uh, the Jim Boyce Trust and Chris Otis for making this special screening happen. Thank you. And before we begin, I want to share a special note. Um, it's a very important one. And if you have heard of it, if you heard of it before, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, but it's been a, a turbulent year for, for our industry, for all of us, for our world, for our filmmakers, and California Film Institute is not an exception. Uh, we're an independent, nonprofit arts organization, and we've been having a hard time bouncing back from, from COVID-19. Uh, as some of you may know, audience arts organizations are just struggling to see the attendance that we used to see since 2019. And the good news is that we're seeing that our attendance is growing. We're seeing that ticket sales are growing for at least 29% over the last year. However, we're still at half of our pre-COVID-19 attendance, and that's really significant to us. Uh, we've been an organization that has always relied on donations and on community support. And so today I'm, I'm standing here asking you if you could help us support and maintain the magic of cinema alive. Uh, as I mentioned, I work with the education department. Our work is so significant in that we work with students, we work with educators and bring them into the theater, all of this for free, with no cost. And as you, was, you will see in the film Radical, the importance of different and special experiences for students and that engagement and that connection that it is to, to, to bring them unique opportunities is significant. So here's a QR code if you would like to donate now, but there's no rush. You can wait after the screening. There's going to be a QR code everywhere. Uh, you can donate at the lobby, or you can just go to our website, nvff.com slash donate. But we are greatly appreciative of all your support, of your attendance, of being here. And I can't wait to share this film with all of you. And after the film ends, please join us for a conversation with actor Eugenio Derbez and producer Joshua Davis, who will be here in person. Yeah. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy the film. We'll see you afterwards. Thank you. Wow, what a remarkable film. After you wipe your tears, please help me welcome Eugenio Derbez and Josh Davis to the stage, please. Kenny, I, I want to start with you. What was the process like for you to, to adapt to Sergio? How much access did you have to him and how much did you borrow from your own personal life too? Uh, well, uh, you know, it's always scary when you have to uh, portray or play someone who existed, but when that someone is still alive, it, it's even scarier. Uh, and when the, that person is on set with you, uh, it's, <laughs> it's even worse. I remember I was shooting uh, in the middle of a scene and, and somebody came and was like, said he was here. I was like, oh, where is he? And he, he's in the monitors watching you. I, I, <laughs> I freaked out. But on the other hand, when that happens, you have the, the chance of um, talk to this person. I mean, of course, previously, before we started shooting, um, I had a lot of meetings with him. I talked to him a lot to understand his approach to the kids. Um, also, the, the, the director, Chris Sala, uh, talked to him to, to learn 
how he did all this, uh, how he applied his method to, because we wanted to be as real as possible. So everything you see that I did, it's because he told me that that's what he does when he's teaching. So it was very scary, but very inspiring at the same time. Thank you. And Josh, I, I, I want to start with you. Uh, let, let, me, let me tell everyone, ahead. Joshua is the guy who wrote the, the original article from in 2012. <laughs> He's the one who found the story. He found Paloma, he found Sergio. He, we all are here because of him. So big applause to you. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Great story. Yes, for, for anybody interested, uh, the article is called A Radical Way of Unleashing a Generation of Geniuses. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, uh, you know the lack of recognition that Sergio uh, did not receive, and when, as a producer in the film, how did you want to address that little recognition, and how much did you want to show, how much did you want to help to show the impact that Sergio had on the students? Oh, entirely, entirely. Uh, I was surprised, that when, when the story came out about Paloma, it was news in Mexico for maybe a week, uh, a little bit longer maybe, it was a news cycle, right? And uh, somebody called me, I live here, by the way, I live in San Francisco and grew up in Marin. And somebody called me and said, hey, this was a story in Mexico and it was just about Paloma placing at the top of the exam, but how did that happen? Like, is she just a genius on her own or was there a teacher, perhaps, <laughs> you know? And it seemed kind of a good question to me. So I went to Matamoros and met Sergio and sat in the classroom with him for days and was like, whoa. This is really different, what he's doing. And I would walk the hallways and go from room to room, and, and we saw this at the beginning of the movie, uh, Chris recreated it, where the kids are just sitting there and the teacher's just talking to them. And they're expected to memorize what's being said. And then you get to Sergio's room, and it's chaos. It, it's madness, like that scene at the beginning that, that we recreated where the, the life rafts, right, the tables, he did that. And he got rid of all the desks and reorganized the whole classroom. And it seemed really important to me that there was a different approach to teaching that took into account what the kids wanted. Um, and it's been 10 years now. And, uh, and it doesn't seem like that much has changed, to be honest. You know, um, I, I'm hopeful that this film will will bring some greater awareness of, of Sergio's teaching style. Um, there is, a, you know, education's a slow-moving ship. It's a big bureaucracy. Uh, maybe there are some signs of it changing, but not a lot has changed, unfortunately. And on that note, can you tell us about the Radical Fund? Yeah, so uh, with the support of Participant, uh, we have created a fund with a bunch of grantees across the United States to support, uh, to support change in education. And uh, you can find, because this is, this is a film and it's meant to inspire and hopefully inspire change and action um, to, to actually move things in the right direction. So radical.movie, you can find the fund there. Um, we're hopeful that by donating to, commute, to, to grassroots organizations in a variety of different communities across the country that we can make some change. And we, in fact, have a grantee here. Yes, if, please, Ruben Pizarro, can you please stand so everybody can applaud you, a recipient of the Radical Fund. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm really curious, you've been touring with the film, you premiered at Sundance, what has been the most memorable audience reaction or comment? I mean, all of them, this is one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> thanks for the, thanks for the, such a beautiful applause. But um, you know what, I, 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 in my entire career, uh, there are a few, times, and, and this is one of them, where you have in your hands a movie that is so important. Uh, this is not about the, the box office. This is not about succeeding commercially. 
this is about having uh, something in your hands that can make a change in society, in kids. As Josh said, um, education has been the same for the last 100 years. Everything has changed, everything. We never expected to have a cell phone in our hands and computers and technology. The, the world has changed a lot in the last 30 years or more, but, uh, but nothing has changed in education. It's the same for the last 100 years. So we need to make a change because there are a lot of kids that they're missing the opportunity of, of learning. And, um, and Sergio, what you said, he's trying to, to make them think, not memorize. There's a lot of things that we need to change. So just help us spread the word. It's really important to spread the word, to tell everyone to watch the movie, because the more noise we make, uh, we can make more changes. I went two weeks ago to Washington to talk to the, the Secretary of Education, congressman there, because we want to make a change. And the, the, the more this movie grows, we, we, we we're going to be able to make changes, not just in, I'm not talking about Mexico. This is happening worldwide, worldwide, also here in the US. Uh, it's incredible, the, 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 the numbers here in the US, but anyway. So just help us spread the word, please. Are there any educators in the audience tonight? Thank you for your work. Thank you for your work as educators and teachers. Thank you, Kenny. Yes. There's a question there. Um, what is Red Tunnel and now? And then the second question is, what was the reception for this film in Mexico? How was the Should I take it first? Mm -hmm. So Paloma is just about to graduate from college in Matamoros. Uh, I talked to her yesterday. And she has, uh, she just told me that her ambition, you know, initially she was, she obviously is very gifted at math. Um, but after having thought about it now through college, she's decided to become a teacher. And, and then the, and now, the movie well, comes out. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the movie is coming out um, in Mexico on October 20th and in the U.S. November 3rd. Uh, actually, I'm flying, what day is today? Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I woke, I, woke, well, I woke up this morning in, in New York. That's why I'm like a little bit lost. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I just came back from there. Anyway, tomorrow I have to be in Mexico City uh, to start the, the, the press junkets in Mexico. So I haven't been there yet, but we are afraid that the, probably, you know, the government could be like uh, a little bit undefensive, but this is not about, we're not trying to attack anyone. We're trying to tell a story about, about an amazing teacher who made a big change, and, and so it's a really, an, we, we wanna see the positive thing here, not the negative, so we're not uh, pointing at anyone. We just want to try to make a, a better system, to try to make a better world, that's it. So hopefully, um, I mean, I know that the audience will receive this movie amazingly. It's just, you know, the, let's see how it, go, how it goes with the, uh, politically, I mean. There was a, a question earlier about the memorable moments at, at screenings of this, and this is actually uh, probably the most memorable because my mother's in the audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and my stepfather, and my neighbors, <laughs> Randy and <laughs> Cynthia, and friends from my kids' school are here, Rasael and Yadira, so, <laughs> so thank you for being here. You're welcome. Yes? Yeah, thank God we have uh, distribution already. Uh, it's in Mexico, it's open, opening in 4,000 screens. There's 4,200 screens and in the country. And here, I guess, like... I don't know what the number is, but we're almost on every screen. Uh, really? No, there's a, there's, there's a uh, large percentage of screens. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, it's uh, less than Mexico, <laughs> way more, way less. But uh, I, I hope not that much. So um, just try to spread the word. So Because if it goes well, they will open to more screens. So... Um, but, but, yeah. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Tony, and uh, I am from Alamoros, and my brother is a teacher. Wow. And I just want to 
I just want to say thank you so much, you know, for doing this is just incredible. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, I was telling all my family about, about you and your film, and they were all, you know, they started telling me all their stories about, you know, what they're doing over there. Thank you. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go with you. Uh, well, I, uh, I started producing in this country, finally. I did my entire career in Mexico, and I moved to this country nine years ago, and I promised myself that is, if one day I, I, I could produce in the U.S., I would try to change the way uh, we see Latinos on, on the screen. Because, you know, usually... <laughs> Thank you. For many, many years that I was trying to do the crossover, uh, every time they needed, like, a gang member or a narco, they would call a Latino. So I was like, well, okay, for sure. But, uh, but, <laughs> but there's more than that. There are Latinos that are teachers, that are doctors, like the one that I played in Miracles from Heaven. Um, uh, th there are good people also there. So I want to put the light on, on them. So when I saw this story that Josh brought us, I immediately said, this is the kind of stories that I want to tell. I want to I wanna let the, the, the entire world know that there's other kind of Mexicans too that there's nice people and, and the struggles that we have down there. So it was a, an immediate uh, yes. To, to, we, so we bought the rights and we developed the, the movie. And, um, and uh, I've been a comedian my entire life, so this, is, this was my, like my first uh, dramatic starring role. And I was afraid of doing this because usually people like they just like to laugh and that's it when they see, go watch my movies but after coda came out last year two years ago last year right i'm lost uh, we thought it was the moment it was like well i i think this is the moment for radical so um we shot it immediately and 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 well this is my first time doing drama uh, so I, I'm, I'm happy and, and I'm very excited for this new opportunity. This man is, if you don't know, he's a giant comedian in the Mexican culture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then my first time to see him in a role as a, as a professor, was a music professor in CODA, so... Uh, mi pregunta es, este, ¿cómo le fue en cruzar de comediante a un papel más de, de dramático? It, it was really scary, honestly. I remember that I was uh, about to start shooting the first day, and I uh, talked to the director, to Chris Sala, and I was like, what about, you know, glasses, wearing glasses, and a different hairdo, and... I, I, because that's what I am. I mean, I, I always behind the character, and he was like, no, uh, uh, no, nothing. I want you to be just like that, like like you are. Like, I was like, no, 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 but let's let's do some changes. I mean, I I really wanted to hold to something. There was a lot of conversation about hair. Yeah, a lot of conversation. <laughs> lot. Remember, we were like stuck in the house for two days arguing about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big fight, right? It was, it was a big. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I, I, I used to do, I, I did a, a series called Familia Peluche. That, <laughs> oh, it's Ludovico, ahí está. And um, it's a very weird, complicated series. Hard, hard to explain to Americans, <laughs> right? But, uh, and I, I, I was wearing the same uh, hairdos, uh, hairstyle. So, um, I wanted to make a change, but he said, no, no, I, I want you, like, naked. Well, not exactly, <laughs> I mean, you know, with nothing on top. So I, I want you to bring everything for, from the inside. So I was really, I was so scared. So actually, I was um, trying an, a different accent. And uh, literally, the day before I started shooting, I said, mm -mm, I'm going to quit the accent. Uh, I'm just going to be myself, and let's... So be it. And, um, but I was 
terrified on the first day of shooting. And then, little by little, I, I, I found Sergio. And uh, it was beautiful, the process, but it was very scary to me. More questions, yes. <laughs> Growing up, you know, you made me laugh in very tough times. And now you've inspired me mm. to continue doing the work that I'm doing. Thank you. Teach others and just thank you. And it's an inspiration. Thank you. That's what I want to, I, I want to touch people's hearts so we can make a change. So help us really, really to, to, to spread the word because it's important to make a change and give the opportunity to any kid in the world to, to develop their, their potential so they can be what, whatever they want to be. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Yes. Sí. This movie should be trending. And yeah, who did the casting? How did you, how did everything start? Want to talk about the casting process? Yeah, I mean, well, for the kids, uh, it was, we spent a long time looking for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the kids, we actually put posters up uh, around various cities in Mexico and said, hey, open casting call. And um, because the director didn't want to like uh, professional actors. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want professional actors. So we had a, a few of them that they just did a commercial or two, but no more than that. Yeah. So it was, yeah, the, the Jennifer Hennifer who played Paloma, she probably, she had a little bit of experience. Mm -hmm. Tiny. Tiny. But the other kids did not. So there was, I think maybe two weeks. Yeah, it was, it was a risk. It was a risk. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there were, I don't know, two or three weeks before we started filming, just working with the kids to be like, hey, this is, this is how you do this. You know, it's a, it's, there is a skill set that you need to be able to memorize your lines and bring the performance that the director is asking for at this exact moment. Uh, and so part of the way Chris, speaking on his behalf since he's not here, he filmed it in a pretty documentary style where the camera was just kind of floating around. The, you saw it floating around the edges of the classroom a lot. And he let Sergio and the kids kind of interact as they might in a classroom. Yeah, actually the kids, uh, many times they were asking me, why are we doing this if there's no cameras in front of us? They were like, yeah, there's, we're shooting. Yeah. We're shooting, yeah, where's the camera? In your back, and they were like, oh! <laughs> So they, they were not aware of where the camera was, and that was very refreshing because they were not acting for the camera. They were like really like playing, and, and then I was asking them constantly to just uh, now change the words. The, the, the minute I, I felt that they were getting like, you know, like repeating a, 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 the same sentence many times, like, like a robot, I would like change the words, say the same idea, but, but different words. So it was a very, very unique and very different from what usually you, you should a, a film. That showed an interest in continuing directing. Yes, yes, I, I, they, they, they love it. They love the experience. And uh, I, I, this is, we feel like, like uh, Joshua when he found Paloma. I, I, I feel that we found a lot of Palomas in acting wise. So um, hopefully they're going to continue acting. And I, I'm sure that after this movie comes out, uh, they're, they're going to have a lot of. Uh, request to act in another movie because they're amazing. Amazing. Thank Please, you. Please, another round of Thank applause you. for Joshua and Eugenio. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Gracias.